Hello and welcome. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Height Vision. But before we do, make sure you follow the link in the bio to purchase your merchandise to support DVS and the Ditech technical experience. So if you want to get on board and wrap and wear your merch with pride, then on the link below and order yours today. Don't forget to tag us in on when you're wearing your merchandise on site. The best entries will win something. Don't know what, but we'll figure something out. So what we're going to show you today is this new digital signage media player. So it's about, well, it's actually bigger than an iPhone. So there's my iPhone 11 Pro. So it is Android based box, um, network based. So HMI cable out the back into this monitor here, uh, the 12 volt PSU. And we've also got the uh, LAN network connection there. Blue light shows is powered up and it's got two screw holes on the back. So you could technically mount it onto a wall or double Velcro on the back of a monitor. The idea of this media player is it uses a software called Foc Light, uh, currently, or uh, FOC Light. Um, we can program this little device to show uh, media information, menus, digital signage information, but we can also combine it with the density uh, counting solution uh, and also the thermal solution. So you can do a three in one. So if you're looking for something that can display not only menu information, you know, or digital information of some kind, you know, public information, but combine it with the store density layout plus the thermal screening solution, then this is your puppy. So basically put this on the network, connect it up to a monitor. It comes with this lovely IR remote control. So you say you can activate it from the screen here. Uh, install the FOC software, the Foclight software onto a uh, Windows PC, which we'll transfer to shortly to show you the setup. And then we'll come back and show you the screen. But the first thing it says is welcome, please activate the terminal device to use the information release system. So again, you can use this lovely uh, mouse, well, it's like a wireless mouse effectively. Click activate, type in the password, the one you want to activate it with and then we'll move through to the next thing. Then we can add it to our software over there, so stay tuned. Okay, so for those of you that wanna know, if you do wanna change it from, like I said, I don't have DHCP, so I had to assign this a static address. This unit does also support Wi-Fi, but all I've done is gone into the Android settings, the settings cog there, gone into Ethernet, or you can choose Wi-Fi there, click Ethernet, scroll right down to the bottom, and then you select Ethernet IP mode as static or DHCP. So once you change it to static, you're then able to input the static IP address details that match the applicable network that you're on. Once you finish with that, press home, home again, and let's start the application. Go into applications, Fox sign player, press start. It'll start that. It'll come up there with the details in the bottom left hand corner with the IP address is currently offline. Now we have to go and register it on the Fox light sign software. So follow me okay so we've installed the fox sign like fox the software the first thing you have to realize or you have to do is along the bottom of the software you'll see the device pop up so we've it's given us the static ip address serial number etc and it's activated because we activated this in the previous software in the previous steps if you had dhcp it would appear down here the network would support the dhcp give it an address you could activate it and add it that way so it's a good thing that i showed you how to do that in case you're in the same situation as me that you need to activate it and then assign the ip address manually so highlight the device and then click cms registration now you can either have a pc locally that supports these devices or the pc could be off site if the pc is off site then you'll need port forwarding so this pc here will need a static ip address uh, externally you assign the ip address to the units uh, externally to point it to this uh, software so they can be centrally managed so one software can manage multiple deployments we're going to use it in a sort of what we believe a typical installation where we're going to add the device directly to the software on the same network. But again, if you do want this to be managed from a central location and all of the devices to be uh, seen in the software and, you know, managed from a central location, what you need to do is um, on the device, that device, there's an option for server, input the IP address and details in there, which will tell it to look for this software to start with. And then in the software itself, there are ports to forward. So if I close the software and then open the software back up, you will see here shortly once it opens up, click on port settings and you've got your two ports. So my uh, internal and my Wi-Fi. So on my 
internal port there. They're the ports and the green is tick. All green ticks mean that's fine. And then again, on my Wi-Fi port, it show the same. If you want to enable port mapping, you can tick that and then do the external to IP and change the port mapping um, to follow what is needed. Put it back to Nick2, click save, click login, okay. And then the software will run. So again, you can do this and manage them centrally. So back to terminal management, expand this, click on this and then CMS registration because we're going to add it and register to this particular installation. So yes, type in the password that we assigned earlier through the activation process. Click OK. The device will be added and then come online shortly. And now it's online. So from here, we can actually start to manage the device. What we first need to do is in this uh, folder here, I have an APK to update, so we need to update the APK, and I also have the firmware of the unit to update. So we're going to update that now to make sure we're on the most relevant uh, firmware and APK. So give me two seconds, and then we'll be back once I've updated them. Okay, so basically, uh, to go through this now, if you go to Control Panel, and uh, we're going to create a program. I've already created one, but I'm going to show you the gist of how we do this. So you create a program, give it a name, so test. A touchscreen or untouchscreen or touchscreen, whichever one, so we'll call it untouchscreen. And then landscape, portrait, or custom, so we'll call it landscape. Click OK. The basic gist of this is this. Click on template, and we've got some already in here, and you can choose landscape or portrait there. So if you wanted uh, one with like an image, you just drag this across and enter, and you've got like an image you can set on the right hand side. So it could be a menu, general information, whatever that may be. You've got the store counting, store density, and then the thermal camera uh, linkage, if that's what you want. Now you can change all of this as required, but you see with the templates there, you can have store density, uh, thermal and store density, thermal store density and menu, or store density and menu. So we've got some templates already set, or you can just create your own. The basic gist is, is this. On picture, you can import some pictures. So I've imported two pictures there. And if I wanted to have a static picture on the right-hand side, I simply drag that picture and drop it there. Nice and simple. For the IP camera, so if I want to show a thermal camera, it's as simple as this. Click on the, therm on the IPC tab, go down to network stream, and you can see there's four cameras that I added earlier on in the control panel. So underneath the control panel, terminal management, remote settings, and then IPC cameras, I've added four or three cameras there. So that's the thermal camera and that's the people counting camera directly. You can you could add them through an NVR also. So click that, go back to this. So click on the that channel there and we're going to add um, the thermal image. So you've got the four there or you can click add and then type the details in there. Drag that down to there. Boom, done. And you can see their thermal imaging camera. Click on that one. You can see the GIF there. Now on this one, Click on the green man circle, go down to cameras, uh, which you're already in, and then you drag the appropriate camera as required across to this green man. Now you can have multiple cameras associated to this. So you can do it through an NVR here, or you can disable NVR, and then you can put the maximum count capacity in there. So if you're doing it through the NVR, type in the NVR capacity and then the allowed threshold. Because um, you could have multiple cameras added to that NVR, or you could have multiple cameras that you want to add in directly through the software. That is very versatile in that way. So again, set the threshold there. So if it's 500, set the threshold, NVR or no NVR. Don't forget the latest, on the older firmware, it was 100 capacity. On the latest firmware for the dual lens people counting camera, their threshold is now 1000. And again, you can change the applicable uh, settings as required. So you can untick these, change the font, move it around, etc. Uh, you know, change the font colors and all sorts. So uh, move that around. So you can actually sort, sort of um, start you know, building this as to your own display, really, or turn them off. Again, if you want to link a camera to this so it drives it through the display, simply select the green man, and then all you do then is select the appropriate camera. So this is camera free, for instance, drop it in there, but then you'd add, you just drag multiple ones to add it into that display, so they then uh, com 
combined together. If you're going to use multiple cameras, then you are going to use an NVR to, to do that. This is for really for a single camera um, linkage option. But again, it's very flexible. Again, you can add in text, uh, applications, videos, all sorts. You just click on add and you could drag a video perhaps into this screen here. So it could be like a promotional video for your company or something. I don't know. Anything really. It's very, very powerful. Passenger flow. Again, we've got different ones. And then uh, you can just uh, choose the appropriate one. So if this one doesn't suit you, you can actually drag that one in there or select one of these appropriate ones. Uh, what else am I thinking now? Da, 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 da. Stream, network cameras, and, or a web URL. So you could click a web URL, uh, which you're not going to do. But if I'm happy with this now, so this is sort of, um, you know, my, my, my screen layout. And again, you can drag this round, move it thing, make up your own, whatever. It's very flexible. Once you're happy with that, click save. If you click preview, it'll show you what the screen looks like. And again, click on exit. If you want to save that, click save. And you've got the test or DVS. If you want to push it to the screen, so you could have different programs for different screens. And again, create schedule. So different screens at different times with different locations, cut in messages. But again, the simple gist of publishing it is select it. So we'll select the DVS one. And then you go to this one here, release. Release the terminal or release the USB flash disk. We'll release the terminal. Task name, we'll call it DVS. Choose my unit or units, and then you can choose an effective time for it to be released or leave it unticked, click release, and that will push that to the terminal over there. Now, I've already done that, so I don't need to push it again. But again, this is, it is as simple as that. And you can have lots of different ones going at lots of different times. Um, and then you can obviously, let's exit that exit this you can obviously build up many many uh, programs that you can sort of alternate set on schedules so click on schedule and you can assign different different um programs or dvs and tests to run at different times of the day it really is as simple as that you can spend as long or as short as you want i did it the short way just to get this screen up and running but you could really invest time and skill set into this to deploy marketing uh, products to your customer base and to deploy them from a central location. So it really is a powerful device that's been adapted for the modern day problem that we see today. Hopefully, I'm going to transfer you back over to the camera there so you can see the screen directly. But hopefully this has given you sort of a bit of an insight into how this works. If you're stuck, again, there is a full manual. You can follow this and it will sort of tell you all of the programming details. So if anyone wants this, uh, please let me know and I'll, and I'll send this over to you. Uh, stay tuned and we'll transfer you over to the PC for the last bit. Thanks, guys. Okay, so behind me is the screen. Now you can see you can, I can make that as big or as small as I want. You've got the thermal camera there. So that's my thermal camera for the temperature screening solution with the black body there. So you can choose the visual one if you'd rather have it as the visual camera rather than the thermal camera to get that person detail. And again, just choose that as the channel. We've got our static GIF there, you know, have a bit of fun with it, or, you know, especially for this video. So a bit of fun there. And obviously there's our people counting uh, store density solution, which is linked to the uh, people counting camera above me. So I'm just gonna go in and out quickly. I set the threshold to one. There's only me here, so it makes it nice and easy to test. So I'll just show you that quickly, how it works live. And there you have it, a nice simple solution that you can obviously manage centrally, push to many locations, set up schedules, blah de blah de blah. You get the idea from the video you just watched. Please, please, please uh, keep subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting like you have done. We really appreciate all of the feedback that you guys have given. Hopefully you'll find this a, a really cost-effective and viable solution given today's climate. Um, any questions, please ask. Stay safe, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and don't forget to buy your merchandise from the link in the bio below. See you next week for another how-to video. Cheers, guys.